What's going on YouTube? I just came back from the Vancouver Regional Championships and I'm excited to be bringing you guys my number one pick for EUIC in the new Temporal Forces Plus Rotation format, which is just Bibzard. Now, I've been working on this list a lot and I think it's really strong and specifically, I think it's very strong into Pidgeot Zard, which in today's video, I'll be facing off against my friend Jackson, who will be using a very popular Pidgeot Zard list and we're going to see which deck is better so first I'm gonna talk about my list then you're gonna hear from Jackson and then we've got four tabletop games recorded for you guys so getting into my deck list I've got four Charmanders pretty standard I got a 2-2 split of the heat tackle blazing destruction one I'm not really sure which one's better but surely you want at least one or two of the 70 HP ones just because of Sableye then I got one of each of the Charmeleons same idea I don't really know which one's better yet so I just got both them in there and I found that the heat tackle Charmeleon's attack has actually been a very useful option in order to knock out some small one prize Pokemon without having a two prize Pokemon in play. 3-3 uh, three, three bib. Originally, I had a 2-2 two, two bib line, but this three thicker 3-3 three, three line has been really helpful, especially in games where my opponents start killing them. You always want to have two in play, so having that thicker line protects you from maybe prizing them or having them hunted down. Squovit, this is like the MVP of the deck. It really allows your engine to function. Otherwise, you can run into chunks of five cards that are unplayable. We've got a lot of supporters in here and a decent amount of energies as well. So it's always nice to chuck cards to the bottom and continue drawing. Radiant Charizard and Manaphy, pretty standard. Radiant Charizard, amazing one prize option. You'll see me use this card a few times and then Manaphy, mostly for Greninja decks. It's not gonna come up in this game. Uh, onto the supporter line, pretty standard stuff here. The only thing I'll call out is that Cypher Maniac's code breaking is broken in this deck and in a lot of decks I've noticed in the new format. So definitely try this card out if you think it could fit into your deck. It can get you Rare Candy Charizard. It can get you Prime Catcher plus uh, anything. It can get you uh, TM Evo on turn one. It works with Squobit. It works with Bib. Just an amazing supporter overall. Now onto the item counts, nothing too crazy going on here. You'll see I've got two counter catchers. I think that is really good. Um, being able to gust off of Arvin or a Cypher, Cypher Maniac's code breaking is really valuable. Uh, two rods, got to recover your guys. Um, with this two rod, I imagine you could probably cut down on the fire energy. So if you were looking to add something, you could go ahead and do that. Now, Prime Catcher as well. This is like the MVP of the deck. Uh, I said it was nice to counter catch her off of Arvin and Cypher Maniac. Well, if you're even or ahead on prizes, you can't do that. So the Prime Catcher really allows you to make those plays, which are very important. Uh, other than that, we got a vacuum. There's a lot of pesky tools in the format right now, so I could even see playing two of these. Um, Heavy Baton, Collapse Stadium, um, XP share, Heroes Cape, Great, or Maximum Belt are all tools that you kind of want to get rid of. So having a Lost Vacuum is very valuable. Then we've got Vitality Band and Defiance Band. These let you hit some specific numbers. Uh, some big callouts are Vitality Band lets you kill a Pidgeot or any 280 HP Pokemon. There are a lot of them, especially the V-Stars, um, when your opponent has taken three prizes. The Defiance Band is mostly for the interaction where you have, your opponent has two prizes remaining. It lets you one-shot a Charizard EX, but it is also useful in other situations as well. Uh, you can put it on Radiant Charizard to be able to hit 280, which is also a significant number. Then to round out the energies, just seven fire, one jet. You could probably get away with less here, uh, but the jet is a nice option as the barrel is kind of fat and you only have two ways to switch it out. So after this, we're going to hear from Jackson, and then we'll get into the games. My name's Jackson. I, uh, I used to play a lot of Pokemon with Rowan and Raymond back in the day when we were all kids. Came fourth at Worlds, fortunately losing to Rowan in the, in the semifinals. Um, and yeah, so I, I took a pretty big break from the game. I wanted to play volleyball, but new format's looking kind of fun. I've been playing around a bit, talking a lot of theory with, uh, with Raymond Long. So this is what we got today, playing, playing some Zard Mirror. Um, this is very inspired by a, a Japanese list online. It's like one card off. Uh, a lot of guys are playing Jirachi. I really don't see the point for it. And so I've just added the fourth Poffin from kind of that most common list. Just one more ball card, more consistency. You always want to see a turn one. So 
Manderlein, I have no idea what Mandis was supposed to be playing. Not going to lie. I find it never matters. We'll see as the format goes on. Uh, kind of same with the Charmeleons. Personally, I feel like this deck's a little bit weaker to uh, Devo. And this Charmeleon blocks Devo, so you always want it on your bench. Got the three Zards, 2-2 two, two Pidgey. And probably the biggest standout from here is we're playing two Rotom, which is... It was weird. It, it, it caught me off guard at the beginning as well. But essentially, um, VIP Pass is gone, and VIP Pass can always find Rotom. So now we have just slightly less outs. We're looking at more like Nest Balls or Ultra Balls for Rotom. So in this case, prizing Rotom's not bad. Uh, you're almost always seeing it turn one. In fact, in most of our games today, we, we started Rotom. So you're seeing Rotom, which is nice. And so you're not playing Luminion because starting Luminion is just kind of, now you got two Vs in play. You'll see like having having a V in play is costing a lot in, uh, in new formats. As far as uh, the supporter counts go, it gets interesting. So it's pretty thin. I think, but like, it's working in Japan. Only two boss, because we do have that pal path, and uh, lots of gust. And then uh, everyone's been switching to a Roxanne instead of a fourth Iono, because uh, Roxanne, like, once they take three prize cards, Roxanne's just better to see more cards in your hand, since Pidgey isn't letting you consistently draw like the barrel does. And then we play the nice and spicy Professor Turo. It comes into play a lot. We're looking at Turo or Rotom. So we're looking at Rotom every game and then Turo or Collapsed it. Um, and you'll see a lot. I mean, Turo on Zards after they get damaged is a big play. Turoing up Pidgey and not giving your opponent a two prize room play is a big deal. Uh, there's just, there's a lot of lines that come into play with this. And then, I mean, Turo Palpat, maybe you sneak a game against Blocklax. Probably not, but there is an out there. So then items, very simple. Triple counter catcher. Play triple counter catcher before you hate on it. I don't, in almost every matchup in new format, I mean, we're going down in prizes against Chimpao. You just throw counter catchers in their face. I mean, I, I've been really liking it. See how you feel about it. By all means, go down to two if you want. Uh, we got the double rod, of course. Um, Palpat is the tech, right? Now we can see more boss. We got Turo again. We got the vacuum, the collapse stadium. Four seal, of course. Choice belt, still needed against Tina, right? Choice belt on Radzar to hit 280, pretty big deal. Um, maximum belt is the item of choice. It's very important in Zard Pidgey Mirror. So we really don't see maximum belt today, but uh, putting it onto a Zard after they've taken two prizes, being able to hit 290, pretty big deal into Mirror Match. So I think it's good for now. I can definitely hear an argument for Prime Catcher if you want, but I think this is pretty good. And then we got the Six Fire and the Mist Energy as well for uh, putting onto your Pidgeot, uh, getting away from Devo, or putting it onto your Zard to dodge Moon or Tina attacks. And now, I mean, you got the Mist, you got the Turo. I think you can live Sableye attacks pretty well. So I'm not putting Jirachi in until until Lost Box is something crazy, but for now, this is what we're going with. It's been working pretty well, but we'll see how it performs today. All right, so hopping into our first game, we're gonna have me on the left and Jackson on the right, and I'm gonna be rocking my Bibzard deck while he rocks his Pidgeot Zard deck now. I won the coin flip and I decided to go first, mostly because Jackson's deck doesn't attack at all on turn one, so I wanted the extra turn to try and set up. Uh, even though I want to use TM Evolution and Arvin on my first turn of the game, it's essentially the same thing. This just gives me an extra turn and potentially, in this case, will allow me to barrel and find more cards and to hopefully get that TM evolution down. So onto Jackson's turn, he's just gonna play Buddy Poff and Nest Ball, set up his board. Uh, he really only needs one Pidgey and one Charmander as I didn't even get down a single Charmander. So it's impossible for me to attack and remove any of these Pokemon from play. So realizing he's not under any attacking pressure, Jackson's not gonna opt for a Body Poff in here in order to fill his board, but instead he's just gonna get, uh, I believe he actually switches his Ultra Ball out for a Rare Candy just to help prepare himself for uh, that turn two Candy Pidgeot Candy Zard play. Um, originally he was gonna get the Ultra Ball, but realized he actually has more outs to those stage two Pokemon because he can draw into Ultra Ball or the stage two Pokemon themselves and takes the Rare Candy wisely instead. Now, over to my turn, I'm just going to get down a Charmander, Bib, and Iono Jackson's hand away after that instant charge. Uh, and I actually get super lucky here and find my TM Evolution and a completely full board uh, with a Charmeleon and two Bibs. So, great turn for me. 
and I'm looking poised to have a strong turn three attack. Now onto Jackson's turn, he's really looking for rare candy Charizard here, but he doesn't find it. Just a couple Charmeleons, retreats that Rotom, not wanting to give up two prizes, and passes the turn over to me. Now the Squobit is putting in work, finding me everything I need. I Squobit into the Charizard straight up, which allows me to take all these fire energies out of my deck, which is great because now when I Barrel, I will not draw into a handful of fire energies. Uh, additionally, I find a great find here in the Cypher Maniacs decoding uh, in order to get Prime Catcher and Vitality Band, which is the exact combo I need in order to KO that Rotom and take the lead in this game. Now, I opt to kill this Rotom immediately instead of just taking out a one prize Pokemon because I know that Jackson likely has something like a Collapse Stadium or a Professor Turo in his deck, and in this case, he is actually playing both, and I don't want that Rotom to leave play. I want to capitalize on those free prizes as my deck does not play any of those liabilities, and I want to be sure to punish Jackson for using such a frail setup Pokemon. Now, onto Jackson's turn, he has a couple of options here. He's definitely going to need to get that Pidgeot going and get that Charizard, um, but he could either attack into my active Charizard, or he could countercatcher in the Bib, and it looks like he is going to countercatcher kill the Bib. I like this strategy. When you're falling behind, it's important to attack your opponent's draw engine and hope that they start whiffing some pieces of the puzzle especially as my board is full and I can only set up two bibs, it gets a little awkward if they keep dying. So onto my turn, I'm really just going to be looking to reestablish that barrel. So I Arvin for Betty Buddy Poffin. And other than that, I don't really need to do anything this turn. I could use boss's orders to knock out a one prize Pokemon, but uh, I think I'd rather just two shot this Charizard in the active as it requires a little bit less resources to do so. So that's what I do. I just activate all my abilities and punch into that Zard. And it looks like Jackson is going to continue with his plan of hunting my barrels down by pidgeoning for countercatcher and bringing in that bib uh, in addition to the iono he just played it is possible here that my four or five cards are completely dead and i start falling behind in the game but as you can see my hand is not dead i've got a bunch of good stuff to work with here ultra ball arvin buddy buddy poffin and that's going to mean more barrels coming onto the board giving me a good stream of cards now all I'm going to be looking to do from here is knock out this Charizard in the active, go down to two prizes, and then at some point find a knockout onto that Pidgeot EX and win the game. Now I'm going to fill my deck with as many barrels as possible there, you can see with the Super Rod, to prepare for a potential Iono to two, or Roxanne, which at the time I didn't even know Jackson played, but is uh, highly effective. So I think from Jackson, the best play here would be to countercatcher in the bib and Pidgeot for Roxanne and then knock out the Barrel and hope that my cards are completely unplayable and maybe you can find a way back into the game from there. But oh, never mind. I just realized all of Jackson's countercatchers are in the discard pile, so he actually cannot pull off that play. And it looks like he's going to have to decide between boss's orders or Roxanne. Uh, perhaps Roxanne, Maximum Belt, Knockout, my active Charizard would be good, but looks like he doesn't have access to that either and is just going to have to use Arvin, which uh, is going to be a disaster as I believe I have seven cards in my hand and all I need to win the game is a Charizard EX and a Boss's Orders. Yep, so Jackson's going to finish his turn, take the KO, and I'm moving very quickly as I have the game in hand. There it is, Charizard EX, Boss's Orders, and Bibzard is going to go up in the match 1-0. Now, interestingly enough, heading into the second game, Jackson has actually opted to go second, most likely because he knows that I like to use TM Evolution on the first turn of the game. Uh, but as the series goes on, we're going to decide that going first is optimal as you have a better chance of having a strong turn two and getting that first attack off. 
Uh, so, I mean, we're both playing at the same time there, but essentially all I did was Ultra Ball for Bidoof pass, and then Jackson played an Iono, put down a bunch of guys, and used Rotom to end his turn. Now, initially, uh, Jackson didn't want to put down Rotom this game, as it cost him pretty heavily in the last one, but he took a look at his hand and realized that without the Rotom, he would not be able to function. Now, nice little play here. I'm going to use Cypher Maniac's Decoding, get the Bib, Bib for 5, find the second card off the Decoding. It's going to be that TM Evolution, and we're going to have another great start this game. Unfortunately though, it looks like I had both my bibs in my hand and the Charmeleon was prized. So back over to Jackson, he's going to be looking to put together that turn 2 Candy Zard Candy Pidgeot play, but it uh, looks like he doesn't have it again. I feel like this deck has gotten a little weaker post-rotation without the access to Battle of the IP Pass, and especially without Mew Celebrations. That was a huge asset to the deck in order to find those rare candies. So he's just going to pass it off to me, and now he finds himself in a spot where he is behind and has a Rotom V in play, which is going to be a bad combination for him. Now this Squovit is just putting in work for me. Squovit into the barrel. That's a great find. Then I can find this Charizard, and it looks like I'm poised to take the first knockout of the game. Now I do draw Prime Catcher here, which would let me take out the Charmeleon, but I decide that I am satisfied with this Charmander, and I want to save this Prime Catcher so that on my next turn I can take another one prize knockout and stay on even prize cards. A big theme in this Charizard matchup is that you're going to want to stay on even prizes for a few numbers. The first number that's important is that if you're on three prizes, your opponent can attach a Vitality Band and one-shot your Pidgeot EX, which is a big play. Additionally, if you have one prize remaining, your opponent's Charizard EX can one-shot your Charizard, uh, which is an even bigger play and definitely something you want to look to avoid. Now, at this point, Jackson isn't 100% sure of my list, so he puts a Mist Energy on his Pidgeot, likely to play around a potential TM Devolution, which would be pretty backbreaking for his board if I was able to pull it off. But I don't play TM Devolution or any really Charizard techs, just a straight up Bibzard list, as you saw at the beginning of the video. So, onto my turn, I just used the Prime Catcher to bring in a 1 prizer, like I said, looking to go for a 2-2-2 two, two, two prize map. Now, I think I actually could have just punched the Charizard here, and it would have been fine, and then I could just knock out a 1 prizer on the following turn, but this works too, as I am very far ahead in the prize trade. So Jackson is just going to develop his board, set up another Charmeleon, perhaps a Buddy Buddy Poffin here to get more Charmanders down, I'm not really sure. Oh, looks like he's going to go for a Counter Catcher. Now, I don't think he's going to end up playing this, he's probably just going to knock out this active Charizard, uh, as it is my only one, and force me to find rare candy and a new Charizard, but perhaps just thinking that Counter Catcher will be useful in the future. Yep, realizing that counter catcher is not particularly useful, switches it out for a super rod. Uh, I like that from Jackson, seems like a good idea. Now, onto my turn, I'm just going to buddy buddy Poffin, replace that Charmander that just died. You're going to see uh, as a theme throughout the video that the best board for this Bibzard deck is two Bibarrels, Squovit, and then three Charizards, whether that is like Charmander, Charmeleon, Charizard EX, or Radiant Charizard. It's nice to have three attackers, two Bibarrels, and the Squovit. Now, the Squovit is really underrated. As you can see throughout the game, I'm constantly throwing hands full of junk onto the bottom of my deck, allowing me to barrel into more good cards. Now I'm going to Arvin here for Vitality Band and Super Rod, um, likely angling a Pidgeot knockout on the next turn in case Jackson decides to start hunting down my barrels. I'll have the option of killing his Pidgeot. So he's likely afraid of that and will probably just go for a punch into my active Charizard here as he doesn't want to lose his Pidgeot EX.
Uh, additionally, he's going to get down that Radiant Charizard, which I like to see as it's a great way to weave in a one prize option and prevent the obvious 2-2 prize map that I'm going for here in order to win the game. Oh, wow. It looks like, oh, right. He's going to retreat into the Radiant Charizard, put back the fire energies, and use Charizard to power it up now while I'm on four prizes. Uh, this is a great play as it's going to force me to have continuous boss's orders on the next two turns, uh, especially because I've already used my Prime Catcher and I won't be able to use Counter Catcher. It's actually going to be very difficult for me to use boss's orders this turn and on the following turn as there are only two in my entire list. But it looks like I'm going to find one here, and part one of the plan is in motion as I'm going to take out that Charizard. Uh, now from Jackson, we're likely just going to see uh, maybe a Roxanne here and an attack with, yep, there's the Roxanne, and an attack with the Radiant Charizard. Uh, you want to be using one prize Pokemon when your opponent has two remaining, so that's a great play on Jackson's end, and he's just going to have to hope that I can't find my final boss's orders. Now, uh, it's, this position is actually really bad for Jackson, as even if I whiff the boss's orders on this turn, I don't have a single two-prize Pokemon in play, and I can actually just find that boss's orders on the next turn. Now, I actually made a mistake here, and I sent up the wrong Pokemon. I should have just sent up this Charmeleon so that um, I could use it to evolve and knock him out. But I sent up the wrong Charmander and put evolve it into Charmeleon, which is going to give it a fat retreat cost and is going to be just a bad play on my end. And as you can see, I totally forgot. I actually accidentally double evolved that Charmander into the Charizard to win the game, but if I just promoted the Charmeleon that could evolve in the beginning, uh, I would have been able to just win that game with Charizard EX and boss orders. So uh, Jackson and I just realizing that decided to just call it a win for the Bibzard deck, and it is now up 2-0 in the series. Now that I've smoked Jackson twice with my Bibzard deck, he got a little fed up and decided that he wanted to switch decks with me. So we're going to see if I can take on my own Bibzard deck with Jackson's Pidgeot deck. So we did a coin flip and looks like I think I won the coin flip and decided to go first with the Pidgeot Zard deck. And I'm even going to get a mulligan here, which is going to be nice. So going first, yep, Nest Ball, Buddy Buddy Poffin, that's sweet, gonna let me get down all my basics and get this Rotom, as my hand actually doesn't have much else going on, so I'm gonna need to find a rare candy in order to get going. And onto Jackson's turn, he also has a Buddy Buddy Poffin, good on him. Uh, unfortunately, he started this Manaphy, which could cost him throughout the game. It's going to take up an entire bench spot, likely replacing a potential Squovit from his board, which is pretty unfortunate for him. He's definitely hoping that I knock out this Manaphy. Now, he just puts down a bunch of basics and passes the turn over to me. No energy for him to use TM Evolution, unfortunately, but also luckily for him, uh, I don't have a rare candy here, so I actually can't set up... Uh, a Charizard. Now, it would be nice here if I played a Luminion in my deck. I could Luminion for Arvin, get Rare Candy and Forest Seal Stone, and I'd be off to the races. But this list does not play a Luminion, so I just decide to use Instant Charge after putting down another Charmeleon. Now, onto Jackson. He shows me he's got the TM Evolution in hand. Uh, but does not have the fire energy, and it looks like he's going to go for a TM Evolution play anyways. Uh, off the Iono, he's going to hit a fire energy, which is going to be great for him, and has gotten almost to the perfect board, just missing that Squovit over the Manaphy, so uh, hopefully for him, I knock that out here. Bit of a slow game for both of us, um, him whiffing the turn 2 Zard, me whiffing the turn 2 Zard as well, but we're finally going to get to the game as I Rare Candy into Pidgeot and set up a Charizard EX finally. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have access to a boss's orders here as I had to use Arvin, so I am going to have to settle for a knockout on the Manaphy, which I'm sure Jackson, Jackson was thrilled about in the moment, as it completely fixes his board for the rest of the game. 
Now, because I did take a one prize knockout as the Pidgeot Zard player, I'm definitely going to be looking to take another one prize knockout on the next turn. And that Babero on the bench, one of them is going to have to go uh, as I really want to target his draw power. Now, Jackson is going to have Countercatcher for the Rotom and is actually going to go ahead in the prize trade and set himself up nicely to just KO the Rotom, the Charizard, and the Pidgeot in order to win the game. Now, this game is following a very similar pattern as the first two games we've played as the Bibzard player ruthlessly KOs that frail setup Pokemon and takes advantage of that. I think that playing Rotom V is a huge liability, not only in this matchup, but across the board, and is why I've actually been favoring this Bibzard deck in the new format. Yep, so I'm just going to end up taking out that Babarel and go to four prizes. Now, Jackson and I are tied at four, but it is his turn, so he is uh, definitely ahead in this game, especially considering that he doesn't have the Pidgeot on his board as a two-prize liability. So, in a way, he's actually two attacks ahead, as this Pidgeot will give up two prizes in one shot later on in the game. Now, another thing about this Bibzard deck that I've been loving is this Cypher Maniac's decoding. Now, Jackson can find any two cards he wants and draw them instantly with the barrel. I mean, we're likely going to see like a Charmeleon and definitely going to need another Bidoof. So it looks like he grabbed a Buddy Buddy Poff in there and he's going to squove it into it, Bib into the rest. Oh, it looks like he actually decided to grab Prime Catcher there for uh, likely for next turn, but... Let's see what he ends up doing with that Prime Catcher. Yep, he's just going to save it for next turn, potentially angling that Pidgeot knockout on the next turn. In case I decide to kill his Babarel again, he'll have Prime Catcher for the Pidgeot, and then he'll just need to find a Vitality Band. Yeah, and that's exactly what I do. I end up killing his Babarel here and hoping that he just doesn't have anything going on as I'm behind in the game, and I'm going to need him to start whiffing some cards in order to catch up. Oh, so it looks like he has Prime Catcher, but no access to Vitality Band yet. So he might actually have to knock out the Charizard EX on the bench, which is not really what he wants to do, but is definitely going to be good. And yeah, that's what he does. Doesn't want to Counter Catcher in that Pidgeot and risk whiffing a knockout. That would be disaster if he had to attack the Pidgeot for 270. So just decides to settle for a knockout on this Charizard and is going to get a Babarel here to further his board state. Going to keep that rare candy so that he can set up another Charizard EX as well. Uh, sounds like a good idea to me, but if you put down a Charizard EX here, it does let uh, the Pidgeot opponent, who is me, uh, win in two turns, meaning on this turn I can put down a maximum belt and then take two knockouts on the two Charizards and win the game. So this is risky from Jackson, and he is going to need um, a boss's orders on the next turn, but he has a big barrel and probably feels pretty confident about his chances. Oh, especially with the Cypher Maniac's decoding, he's going to be able to stack his deck and have anything he wants for the following turn. Uh, oh, wait, no, I have Roxanne in my deck. So, uh, yeah, there, and I'm flashing it to the camera. Of course, Roxanne is going to be a great way to get around the Cypher Maniac's decoding, uh, especially with this Maniac in multiple decks. You know, we see it in Cham Pao as well. It has great synergy with Bibero and Greninja in that deck. So being able to play Roxanne in your deck is definitely going to be an asset in this new format, as Iono might not cut it if your opponent is able to stack their deck with the decoding. And Jackson doesn't even need the decoding. He's got two bosses orders as his two cards. So I'm going to get smoked here. But it was looking grim for me regardless. Uh, and Bibsard is going to go up in this series 3-0, which I definitely would have predicted. Now, heading into our fourth game, we're going to see Pidgeotzard get to go first again, as it can't seem to find a win. So I'm going to be Ultra Balling for Rotom V, as my hand does not look superb. Uh, but I will have a decent turn too, as I saw an Arvin for sure in my hand at least. Uh, but onto Jackson's turn, he's got the world in his hands. Double Buddy, Buddy, buddy Poffin, and Nest Ball, he's going to set up his whole board. Uh, and what else does he have? A Decoding as well. Probably just going to stack a Babero on top for next turn. Oh, 
Maybe he's getting rare candy Charizard, actually. He must have the barrel in his hand already. Um, if he gets Ionode, he'll draw into rare candy Zard. If he doesn't get Ionode, he can just the barrel into it. So he has that guaranteed turn to Zard, which is going to be great for him. Now, unto me, it looks like I am Arvening and Ultra Ball. I'm going to get that candy Zard down. No Pidgeot is going to come into play this turn. And I'm pretty sure I just evolved that Charmeleon. Uh, into Charmander right away, so uh, I hope that doesn't affect our game, but I definitely just accidentally cheated, so uh, sorry about that. But uh, yeah, looks like I'm just going to get that Zard down. No Pidgeot, interestingly enough. We'll see if not having that in play, not having that liability will be good for me later on in the game. I don't think, it, it was definitely not intentional for me to not have a Pidgeot down. I would have liked to get one out, but uh, I couldn't get down Pidgeot and Charizard this turn, so I decided to just settle for only the Charizard, and uh, perhaps we'll see if this helps in the prize trade. Uh, but Jackson is also going to get to instantly smoke the Rotom, which has been a theme of the match, is this Rotom really just giving up easy prizes to the Bibzard player, which the Pidgeot Zard player can never... Uh, do back as the Bibzar deck does not have any of these weak two prize liabilities. But yeah, back onto my turn. I have no Pidgeot and a pretty dead hand, so I have very few actions. Um, something you will see poking out in my hand is the Professor Turo, which is going to let me uh, potentially deny an entire attack later on in the game. But for now, just basically doing nothing. And um, as you can see, that turn, I could have evolved the Charmander into Charmeleon legally, and it would not have affected the rest of the game. So that is nice. Jackson most likely going to be looking, yep, to just smack into this Zard, go for some kind of 2-2-2 two, two, two line, um, and I'm going to punish that promptly with the Professor Turo, and I'm going to put down the Zard, and I'm actually going to realize I have no fire energies in my deck. Pretty big misplay here from me, but just Jackson's just going to let me take that back and fix it so that we can have a nice game here. I'm going to put back Rad Zard as well, potentially could help me swing the prize trade and get out of this 2-2-2 two, two, two prize mapping that Jackson has found. Uh, later on. So just going to knock out that Charizard and Pidgeot is actually going to go up in the prize trade for once, 4-2, to two, but it does not have a Pidgeot in play, which makes this board state pretty suspicious. Now on to Jackson's turn. He's likely just going to be looking to smack into this Charizard for a bunch of damage and clean it up on the next turn, especially with me on three prizes remaining. He's going to be looking to forego the typical Radiant Charizard route and instead go for two consecutive Charizard EXs as they have the most HP. And a good principle in the Pokemon TCG is that you're going to want to force your opponent to take extra prizes if possible. Now, with two prize Pokemon, you can make them take seven. And with VMAX Pokemon, you can even make them take eight prize cards to win the game. But generally, making your opponent take as inefficient as possible of knockouts is a good approach so jackson here gonna forego the radiant charizard get another charmander down uh, and go for two more pokemon ex and on to my turn i'm not going to be doing much as i have no pidgeot and no supporters um However, if I did have a Pidgeot EX down here, it would actually be very detrimental as Jackson's about to go down to two prizes. And if I had a Pidgeot, he would just be able to kill the Pidgeot on the next turn and win the game. Honestly, that Pidgeot would likely already be dead to something like Vitality Band Countercatcher. So uh, perhaps not putting down Pidgeot is actually the best play in this matchup. But uh, that sounds kind of horrible as your deck is called Pidgeot Zard for a reason. But yeah, Jackson's going to play one Iono. My hand is horrifically unplayable and I think I'm just about to concede the game here. And yep, that's going to be the end of that.